Ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Greg Michalowski from uh, ForexLive.com. This is a special webinar for FX uh, Street. And I'm going to talk to you about trading what you see in your Forex trading. A lot of uh, traders sometimes can't see the trees of the forest. And so I'm going to uh, uh, talk uh, or focus, a little, focus my trading on that idea. All right, before we get, uh, get started, let me remind everybody that trading foreign exchange carries a high level of risk that may not be suitable for all investors. In addition to that, leverage creates additional risk and loss exposure. Should you decide to trade, trade foreign exchange, carefully consider your investment objectives, your experience level, and risk tolerance. You can lose all or part of your risk capital, so be aware and be prepared. Uh, no slides. Do you see, see slides? Should be sharing my monitor. So you see him. So, okay. All right. Good. All right. Uh, so that's our risk, risk disclaimer. How can I trade with the smart crowd, with the uh, smart money? And before I um, get into that, let me first ask you to do an experiment. I want you to close your chart windows and instead listen to, uh, say, a Forex uh, squawk box or uh, listen or the business news on your uh, TV. I have a website here, but you know, imagine that's a TV, okay? And uh, you can have the price uh, feed on as well. But that's it. That's all I want you to have uh, on. And uh, do you think that you would be able to trade successfully by solely listening to the squawk or reading or watching the news or, or simply watching your price feed? And for me, and for a lot of uh, successful uh, retail uh, traders that I've talked through through the years, the answer is no. Um, it's just not possible to have uh, something more visual uh, that you could um, use in your trading to uh, make things uh, easier uh, for you as a trader. So now I want you to go the other way and I want you to think about turning off your squawk box and turning off your television altogether. Don't even pay attention to them. Um, you can even turn off your price fee. But, uh, so now you have no news on Greece. You have no news on the Fed. Will they or won't they do something in September? You have no things like the building permits or housing starts or, well, the UK, UK CPI um, the um, uh, or or even like the uh, Fed minutes. Uh, uh, did, did the minutes um, or are the minutes uh, tomorrow going to say several or many or most? Um, uh, is it going to include the words? It was noted. Um, what I found interesting uh, from this article that Adam uh, posted yesterday on our website at forexlive.com, that the uh, minutes continue until the day before the uh, day before the, their release. That is, they continue revising the minutes until the day before the release. Now that meeting took place a few weeks ago, and they're still revising the minutes. Minutes don't they have a stenographer, stenographer, or whatever, typing those minutes out as it goes along, and just make them available after the meeting. Oh, but they're revising the meeting minutes. So that seems to me that uh, th that can uh, perhaps uh, be manipulated to fit the now, the quote unquote now, uh, than what was actually said. You know how those old stories, you know, what, what do they do when you tell someone the story and then they pass it on to the next person, next person, next person. Eventually it all comes back and it's all jumbled. Are the minutes of the Fed really like that? Well, anyway, so, you know, so it kind of, it kind of, brought, you know, gives you the idea that, you know, some of these things can be a little bit manipulated, manipulated, uh, if you will, and um, who really knows, but um, shut all that stuff off. And, and what we're going to uh, instead do is just look at the price charts and just have your charts in front of you. And I ask you now, do you think that you can trade successfully by just watching your charts? And for me, um, and for many other retail traders, the uh, this, the answer to this is yes, yes, they can do better by just watching their charts. And uh, but there is one caveat. There is one caveat uh, that I think goes along with that because you can sit there and watch charts all day long and not know what you're seeing. So you need to know what to look for. You need to know what to look for in your charts. By seeing simple price action and applying simple trading tools that others are likely using on their charts, 
I've found that you can actually hear what the market is saying. You can actually feel what the market is uh, feeling. And you can smell or anticipate a rally or a sell-off. So you can use all your senses by just seeing what's in that chart and feeling it and kind of hearing these uh, voices in your head at, the, at times as well. So that is, um, that is the power of charts. But you, you still need to apply simple tools um, that um, are effective um, and, um, and that you can use, with, uh, use in your trading. That's going to uh, do certain things for you, and we're going to talk about that during our webinar here. Nevertheless, uh, for many traders, they don't believe what they see. When they look at, at the chart, they get all frightened and scared. I often ask the question, why? Why do, they, why do they feel that way? Why do retail traders get all scared and don't believe what they see? And uh, I, there are different reasons for it, but I can characterize those traders who don't believe that what they see as being one of five different types. And so I thought I'd go through those five types for you and see... You know, you know, do an honest assessment of yourself to see if you fit into one of these categories. And I'll try to explain them in a little bit in detail. And so that uh, you can, you know, maybe perhaps bucket yourself in it and understand why you're not seeing the things that maybe more successful traders tra traders do see. Okay. So the first type of trader who doesn't... Um, trade what they see i'll call the ego trader okay and by the way um you know just to make you feel uh, you know feel comfortable and you know i'm here to tell you the truth i used to be all these types of these guys all these you know these five times so it really takes one to know one and so i'm speaking from experience remember I, i've been in the market now for 28 29 or so years i can't even keep keep track anymore so I have uh, I've lived through the ups and downs and downs and ups and all that other stuff that goes along with it and I've been these five types of traders so take solace if you if you do bucket yourself in one of these uh, lists and and uh, but understand that maybe maybe you want to think about making a change so anyway let's talk about the ego trade traders and the ego traders who all are the traders who always know better they are going to tell not listen not follow but they're going to tell the quote unquote market what to do even though those ego traders cannot move the price a fraction of a pip in any trade that they ever do they ignore what they see and uh, see that the the quote unquote market is doing or the when I speak about the market, it always implies the uh, the big boys, the people who move the market. So these ego traders are, you know, pointing the fingers at themselves, saying, "I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm going. I know what the market's going to do. I know what this price act price is going to do from here, and I'm going to I'm going to just tell the market that. I'm going to do my trade, and I'm going to be so in love with it that you know what." I'm the cool guy. Traders, traders, folks, we as retail traders do not have any power to bully market or tell the market what to do. We are insignificant. We are insignificant. And as soon as you're able to realize this, you're going to have the ability to see the market action more clearer. Take your ego and check it at the door. Take your your idea that you can move the market, that you are right, you're going to be right all the time. I know it's uh, it's it's great to have a conviction, but you know what? You've got to realize that you're going to be wrong, and you have no power, no power, to have the price move your way. Absolutely none, zero, less than not, less than, less than zero. Less. Yeah, you have no no chance. And so you have to you have to uh, take yourself from being an ego trader, one that's going to um, you know have these 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 faults, and and become more of a humble humble trader, someone that, that's going to uh, uh, listen listen to the market and see and trade off of what you see 
the market is is uh, doing. So that's trader no, number one, um, the ego trader who doesn't uh, trade at what what he sees, but just goes off of um, you know what he what he particularly thinks. The second type of trader um, who don't trade what they see are what I uh, term the complicated traders, and a lot of uh, a lot of retail traders get uh, pushed into this bucket. Uh, because we have this uh, feeling that we are, uh, the more we know and the more we use, the better off we're going to be. Let's face it, that is the way of, um, that's the way we're programmed in life. We're programmed in life to um, learn as much as we can. Uh, if we learn as much as we can to use those tools to our advantage. But, you know, does a uh, carpenter use anything but a hammer when he's hammering, hammering a nail. D nail. Does he have a saw? You know, some sort of power saw on the other hand, while he's uh, hammering, hammering with the uh, with his other, with you know, with a, either a power hammer or a regular hammer. No, he's just using the hammer at one time. Time you can you can get yourself. You're not going to be any good by getting yourself too complicated in, in being a carpenter by using too many tools or being a trader by using too many tools as well. So these types of traders are the traders who jam their charts with so many trading tools and indicators that it clouds your judgment. It makes you more fearful and simply prevents you from seeing the trees to the forest, through the forest. And... Um, you know, they have the um, Ichimoku clouds, they have eight or ten moving averages on, on it, they have the RSIs, they have the, the MACDs, they have the stochastics, they got all sorts of things going on in their charts. And every level becomes a level to trade against. Can't do that, folks. Can't do that. You got to simplify your charts, you got to keep them clean, you got to see, see, be able to see the trees through the forest, not just see a bunch of trees out there in this big green blob. It doesn't work that way. So the complicated traders, although they uh, they think that they're looking at a lot, they're actually looking at a lot that combines to make a little. And it's not good for your not good for your trading. Uh, it clouds your judgment, increases your fear. It's just uh, it's not a way way to trade. So the complicated traders, the second type of traders who don't see, who don't trade what they see because they can't see it. OK, there's too many things for them to see that they can't see it. And if you're that type of trader, think twice about what you're doing, about why you're using all those tools. And we'll go through some examples um, later on in the uh, webinar to to kind of outline that you don't have to be too complicated in what you do or how you do it or, how, or the tr or the tools that you use in your trading. Now, let's get to go to the third type of trader. Um, it, and I call these the uh, proprietary or black box traders. These types of traders trade with those uh, proprietary alg algorithms or black boxes that they may purchase online or whatever. These traders see tra trades that only they can see. They're proprietary. They're your own. They, they're, they're, they're black boxes that say you know, red or green. They, these traders think that they can beat the market by using uh, signals that are going to flash that green or red at appropriate times uh, to trade. Just, you know, it could be randomly flashed for all we know. Um, some, some, tr some of these types of traders spend hours and hours programming their own sig signals. Other traders take uh, the shortcut. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I put my hand up as well, um, you know, from uh, and, and, and spend money and pay a lot of money sometimes uh, to, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, to buy things, to buy signals that promise to double, triple, quadruple their account balance in weeks. The fact is, that's not likely. Oftentimes, the money is wasted. And the trader is no better off because of the experiment and, and is back to square one, almost to square one minus, because you almost have to relearn everything, relearn everything, program your mind, get everything, get, get everything back in sync with what you want to do as a trader. Complicated formulas in order to program trades, they sound kind of uh, smart to do you know well, well i'm going to take all the fear and greed out of the market by having the program do it but what i've also often found is those types of traders end up spending all their time programming their their proprietary trading mo model that no one can see okay only themselves can see and um and when they start to run it what are they fearful of their own program 
And so they refine it when it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. I mean, they back test it all, and then the first f- five trades lose, and then they have to go back and they have to read. Oh yeah, well it's this or that or whatever, and they're reprogramming because they fear what they they the, the program that they made to stop their fear. Now how how silly is that? And I went I went through this whole 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 routine as well, um, you know, programming my own proprietary tool. I was going to beat the market. I was going to I was going to you know do do what the ego trader does as well. Tell the market what I what I think it should do. And it may work at times, and other times it works, and you don't know. And so you have this great fear anyway, and it doesn't do you any good. Um, oftentimes these these tools just don't do anything uh, for you. And you don't see what the market is really saying. You don't see the market's re- reaction. The, the markets are not that predictable. Um, you know, I like to say that the markets markets do have a, um, uh, a consistent rhythm, but um, it's not like a line dance where they're doing the same thing over and over and over again, okay? It's more of a, you know, a... a um, uh, a, a movement or a dance that's going to change over t- over time. So it's not, you know, it's not doing the, the shuffle or whatever. It's something different. All right. That's what the markets are. And uh, we as we as traders have to adapt, adapt to that. We have to make our lives. Um, we have to have a trading method methodology or um, and, and, and the vision uh, to look at the market and see what the market's doing uh, by having a methodology of what is good and what is bad and, and the right proper tools that you're using. So proprietary black box traders are other types of traders that don't really see what the market is doing um, and it ends up costing them in their trading account. Uh, the uh, fourth type of traders are simply the scare traders. These, tra- these traders actually may see trades but are often too scared uh, to pull the trigger and trade. Let's face it, um, it takes guts. It takes guts to trade. It's not for everybody. Traders who are scared will often not only miss trades, but they will then force trades at inappropriate times and trading levels. So, in effect, they ignore what they see. They're reacting later to what they see because they're too scared. And, um, the, the, you know, there are ways to become not a scared trader. trader. Um, I, I, I'll talk a little bit about it a little, a little later on in the, in the webinar. But, um, but uh, scared traders are the types of traders who, um, who, do, who don't often trade what they see. They don't react to what they see. Um, and you do have to react as a trader. So if you're a scared trader, at least you have that realization that you are R1. And you can, um, there are ways that you can fix that. You can fix that problem. Um, there are also uh, many traders who I know who are scared traders and never really became a, a, a trader. They they couldn't get over that hump of being a, a scared trader, and that can happen too. We're not all programmed to do the same to become traders. Okay, you can learn how to control your fear, to not be scared in your trading, to see what the market's doing, doing. But you need to, um, you know, you you need to get to that point to know what you're looking for. Um, but it, yeah, but still, even some traders can't can't get over that hump of being scared. So if you are, are a, a, a scare trader, you have to make that own judgment yourself. Um, you know, firstly, uh, seek seek advice, seek, uh, seek solutions to your problems, and then uh, make that judgment as far as what being a scare trader or, or not. And so um, that's, uh, that's uh, the fourth type of trader who doesn't necessarily trade what they see because um, they're too scared. And uh, fin- <laughs> finally, the fifth type of trader um, that often doesn't trade what they see are what I call the uh, story traders. Now, they see the story, okay, and they um, uh, uh, they make judgments as far as what a currency pairs, uh, pair will do because of that story. But that story clouds their judgment as to what they're seeing in the price action, the charts. And they think... Um, I can't do that trade. After all, um, you know, things like the euro is going to go to parity. How many of you um, have, you know, still have parity on your, 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 uh, in your mindset about where the euro is going? And it may go there, but let's face it, over the last five months since the year bottomed at 104.62, um, we're, you know, we, we've gone up to 114, 115 area. And we haven't really sniffed that 104 level um, in o- over three and a half months. And since, since, in fact, over the last three and a half months, the price of the euro versus U.S. dollar hasn't traded below 108. And so I still, I still see comments on Forex Live about how people are looking for 
parity. What happened to parity? When is the euro going to go to parity? What's going to ha happen? You know, Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley still sees parity or, or a stronger dollar all the way down to, down to the, uh, the parity level. Now, it may get there. But in the meantime, you know, you're missing out on a lot of trading opportunities because you're, you, you are a story trader. You're focused on that story. And that story becomes your favorite book that you want your mom to read every night. OK, and that's not the way that we as traders can re can uh, trade. We need to um, l read different books. We need to hear different stories. We need to um, um, pay attention to the price action, listen to what the price action is saying. And maybe sometimes, uh, uh, you know, fit the story to uh, fit the price action. I, I prefer to go. Um, uh, I prefer to uh, start to have uh, to have a bias where I'm looking at the price first, and then I'm fitting the, the story in it. Some people take the story first and try to fit a price action in. No, the price action is the leader. Okay, the price action is telling you what the market is doing and then you're gonna you, you know i can guarantee you that whatever happened today it today whatever happens today in the uh in the price action is going to be the story for tomorrow and so that's on a delayed basis that's after the fact we have to we as traders have to be ahead of the curve we have to uh, we have to find those levels where um off of the price action off of tools that we use in our trading that's going to tell us where the price is going to go next and to anticipate where that price is going to go, not and and sometimes that story can cloud your judgment. It can make you um, be um, uh, stubborn to what the price action is uh, telling us, and so um, that becomes a problem uh, for our, our trading. That and that that uh, that type of trader, the story trader, uh, is one that um, that uh, uh, does not see what the market price action is doing. So. You know, sort of in, su in summary, if traders checked their egos at the door, if they decluttered their charts, if they got rid of the get rich quick black boxes and proprietary trading systems, um, if they learned how to control their fear and and um, they uh, stopped being married to stories that change constantly over time, um, it's I'm convinced that you they and you would be a better trader because of it. So we have to get over these hurdles. We have to trade what we, we see. Conversely, if traders learn what it means to trade what they see, um, if they simplified their trading, if they use tools that other traders used and, and could see, um, if they use tools that could define and limit their risk, they too would be better off and more profitable as a trader. So you gotta get rid of one and get the other, get the other. Work to get rid of those uh, uh, those uh, stereotypical uh, tra uh, type of the type of traders, the ego traders, the black box traders, the news stories, new story traders, etc. And you start you start to become a trader that sees sees what the market is doing. That you simplify your trading. You t you use tools that other traders use and can see and you trade with that crowd and you also use use tools that most importantly most importantly are able to define and limit your risk and you're, if you're able to do that I think you're going to be off the better off as a trader. So the question comes, so show me, Greg, uh, what you mean by it. And so that's what I'm going to spend the rest of the uh, next 20 or so minutes uh, taking a look at uh, some uh, some charts and just some recent charts and trying to keep it simple as uh, possible. So this is a, this is uh, the simplest of charts uh, there is. In fact, um, it's so simple, it's not it's not really um, useful here. Uh, but it is the, um, you know, taking a look at the dollar versus yen, it's an hourly chart. And uh, what do we see here? Uh, well, what I see is that the market is uh, moving up and down, isn't it? It's um, it's uh, going up here and it's coming down here and up here and down here and up here and down here. Do you see my do you see my cursor? By the way, people see my cursor. Do 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 do. If I can get a yes from somebody, yes. Okay, good. So. I always, I always afraid of that because, because well, sometimes I go on on the, my other my other screen, um, and I'm I'm sitting there pointing at um, you know, let's say the PowerPoint presentation. I'm not pointing at the real where, where the chart is. And other times I don't know if the if the if the software shows a, shows shows the um, 
the mouse. So anyway, you see my point of it. So we see what what do I see? What do I see? What do you see? Um, well, I see a market that's going up and down. We had this big, huge move to the down. You know, big, big kind of swinging, swinging moves to the upside and down to downside. Not a little, not much else that you can see uh, from that uh, chart. Um, and so what I want to do now is just apply some simple uh, trading tools to the charts and focus on the last five or so uh, days of trading. And what I want we, uh, us to do is to see if we can see some low risk trades where, where risk can be defined and limited, where you can trade at levels that really make sense from a uh, trader's um, standpoint. And once again, I want to remain as simple as possible because if we simplify our trading, trading, we use tools that a lot of traders uh, potentially are using. And and I found that you know the tools that I'm going to discuss here today are ones that they they do. Um, you'll find that the market tends to react at these levels, and uh, they give you uh, t low risk trading opportunities. Let's say that uh, risk about I don't know 10 to 15 pips at times times um, on on the chart and we as traders have to be able to accept that type of um, type of move so the first thing I'm going to do um, here in this chart is I'm going to add some uh, moving averages and I have the 100 hour moving average and the 200 hour moving average and as I mentioned let's try to focus here on um, on the um, you know what's happening here in the near term near term um, why do I use 100 and 200 well I find that the market tends to react uh, to those moving averages okay they tend to react uh, to the moving averages the blue line represents the uh, 100 hour and the green line represents um, the 200 hour moving average now understand that the market has been reacting very choppy of, of late we are in those summertime markets and so um, you know, there, there are times when uh, there is a, you know, not a reaction around around the level that um, I like to like to see. Um, but, uh, you know, oftentimes, you know, even when you don't get a reaction, here's toward the end of this day right here. I mean, you get a get a reaction through the 100 bar moving average here. And then we get this, uh, you know, time where the market just trades above and below the 100 hour moving average here. But it's at, at some point or other, you know, you'll tend to get some some uh, uh, some reaction, some action where the where the market then does say, all right, now it's time to pay attention to that 100 bar moving average. And so we correct down to this level, the market shoots to the upside. But um, as you can see here, just by uh, looking at some of the moving averages here, there are some low risk trading opportunities um, here that the market gives gives us in, in this very simple example, using just these simple tools um, in trading in, yes, uh, I guess, what is this? That was yesterday's or mon Monday's trade year. Uh, the market came right up to the 200-hour uh, moving average, not once but uh, twice right here. And the market uh, failed at that level, and the market started to rotate uh, back to the, to the downside off of that level. I think you know the, the Empire Manufacturing uh, certainly helped out helped out a little bit. But you had the opportunity uh, to sell in this vicinity through here. Here, I think the the market corrected up to around the 40 or 42 level or so after the uh, Empire Manufacturing data came out, right below that 100-hour moving average. The 200-hour moving average had already held at the top side. So we, as a trader, by look at, simply looking at the charts, seeing seeing that, um, are able to react to it. Answer to the question: It's a, it's a simple moving average, just a simple moving average. Um, uh, moving average that I use on the chart. So uh, that. Um, that's um, these are the types of clues that we as we as traders can see. We can see the market uh, falling to the downside, correcting up to the hundred hour moving average, and traders leaning against that level. Now the question comes: Why do the why does the market react here? Because the, the smart traders out there, the smart traders out there, are listening and trying to see where and define where risk can be defined and limited. And if they can define uh, risk and limit their risk against these moving average lines. 10 or 15 pips on you know on either side of them they have the uh, the ability to um, benefit from the movements away from them and if they're wrong what are they going to what are, what are you going to lose you're going to lose 10 or 15 pips if you're right what do you stand to to make more than 10 or 15 pips so even when the price moves above this line right here above the 100 you know we come right up to the 100 right here and what do we do we come right back down and then we correct you know i don't know we probably have some data that comes out that takes the price a little bit above that 100 hour moving average that's not that's not more than um you know it's less than i don't know it's probably five or six pips above that line line 
Um, if you if you so happen to have gotten stopped out because you put your stop just above that hundred hour moving average, that's tough. You know, that's part of trading. That's what you have to live through. Through it doesn't mean that you don't believe in what you see. You still have to believe in what you see because the next time right here or right here, you you might catch that move, okay? Because you sold at that level and the market came down. You know, it's the odds. The odds are going to be in your favor at times, and sometimes you're going to get stopped out, uh, but you still have to get back on that horse, and you still have to understand what the price action is saying um, and and understand where um, where your risk is defined and risk is limited. And if you do that, you're going to be successful. Yes, you're going to lose some trades. You're going to lose at 10 or 15 or maybe even five pips because you put your stop too close right here. But you know that's that's trading. We have to live with it. No one can no one can really predict that. But um, as you can see here, the moving averages work very nicely, um, uh, or can you know tend to work very nicely at the, at levels. There are other times when it gets choppy. Again, a lot of times it's at the end of the day. Here it's the end of the end of the day, or this is what unemployment day right here. So that was just a crazy day all all around. So um, so. Um, so put some moving averages on it. Understand what they uh, what they mean, and and oftentimes you can find some decent levels to lean against. All right, let's um let's uh, add a another uh, dimension here by uh, taking a look at uh, a trend line here. And so um it lo uh, here's a trend line from uh, uh, that connects the uh, recent lows. And this is something that we can see. I mean, I, I always look at a chart and I'll sit there and I'll just I'll, I'll just draw random trend lines in um, against old lows or uh, old lows and try to see if they connect. And indeed, in yesterday's uh, trading, uh, when the uh, market um, came off of our 200 hour moving average here. So again, you had the opportunity to, to sell in here. Or maybe if you got lucky right here, selling against a 200 hour moving average, putting your stop above there, have the market empire manufacturing, typically not a big, huge moving market, uh, start to rotate back to the downside. And so what does the market do? It starts to uh, move down. And where do we come to? Right down to our trend line right here. Is this a level where risk can be defined and risk can be limited? Can you see that level? Is that a level that um, if you you see? And the answer is, yeah, we all can see that. And it's not just me; it's everyone else around the world. If you're, um, uh, you know, if you if you live in. Uh, um, uh, in, uh, in 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 the Far East, or if you live in Australia, or if you live in uh, uh, in, in Europe somewhere, um, or in the United States, you, you, everyone can see that level. Everyone can draw that trend line. Everyone knows that that line is there. Why did the market stop there? Again, traders can define the risk and limit the risk. You're just trading what you see. Now it looks like the market was on its way to the downside. I remember we had that Empire Manufacturing data come out, which is much weaker than expectations. Um, so the dollar yen moved to the downside. You would expect that the, that uh, well, you know, why doesn't the dollar keep on going down? Well, because it found support. It found support against what we could see in the market, and we as traders have to recognize that um, that opportunity and trade off of that. All right. So, um, uh, let, what about uh, down here? Um, down here at the at the lows right here. Why the market hold right there? After all, look at this move to the downside. Wow, that thing was taken off to the downside here, going down, down, down. And uh, if you go back to over here, way over here to the left, and you look at that line right there, this is what I call a remembered line. And the market remembers these old lows, it remembers these old highs, these swing, these swing levels here, where the market comes down, uh, where it comes down, and and we build off of that and move sharp, sharply higher off of that level. And the next time we come down to that level, even if the market is in this free fall to the downside here on uh, you know last week's uh, uh, trading to the, um, trading here, falling, falling, falling. What was that? China, China news, right? Our, uh, China news comes out. It just keeps on going, going, and going. And suddenly we get down to this old low right here, and the market finds support right there. Why? Because the risk can be defined, risk can be limited. Trade what you see. If you can see it, other people can see it. And if you can do that, you're okay. You're okay in your trading. We have other levels um, here. Uh, let's look at this day right here. Here, uh, we we knew we had the 200-hour uh, moving up average up here, but if you come down to this level level right here, where the market found a bottom, it it matches this bottom right here, the day before's bottom. You know, so we have you know this is like this matches this low, this low matches that low. Traders will come in against these levels. What happens if the market went through that level? Okay, you get out. You get out. What would be your risk? Something small. Not a lot, all right? 
And and I can tell you that this move from here, if you if you would have uh, stopped yourself out below this point at, at point three, uh, this move right here um, is more than the risk that you had on the trade. And this only took uh, well, this is one hour later, so you you made at least two to three times what you had risked on the trade right here by just having an hour later having the price move higher there. You can get out right there and just go go play golf or do whatever you want. Take the kids for a walk. Take the dog for a walk. Do whatever. All right. So these are the types of things that traders see. They trade what they see. They believe what they see and they trade off it. They're not scared. They're not using some proprietary model. They're not. They're not um, uh, have some black box or anything that's going to. You know, they just draw a line. <laughs> you just draw a line and say, and and see see some lows. Now this low right here. I mean, the difference between this low right here and these lows right here is about five or so pips. So this was a swing low right here. The market came up. We fell below that swing low level. Moved above it. Came back down to it. Came back to it again, and moved higher. Just find the patterns. The market market builds these patterns. Patterns, uh, patterns. Um, you know, just levels that they like. Levels that they they remember. That's why I call these lines. You know, some people call these, you know, I don't know, ceilings or floors or whatever. I like to call them remember lines. It gives us more a definition. The market remembers these levels. The market remembers these levels. It remembers this this swing low. It remembers, you know, it comes back and it, and it comes back through, through it here. Even right here when the market fell below that level, what did it do? Use that old low as here as resistance and, just, and move down to our other target down here. And then when we broke above it, what did we use? it? We used this level as a support and the market moved higher off of there. Have some... I don't know, something come out here, I guess, comes back down to that line, boom, 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 boom. And these are, these are when the market's moving. Remember, this market's moving really fast to the downside. So is this bar right here. So is this, this move right here, right? It's moving to the downside, and all of a sudden it stops right there. If I can take the line from meatloaf, I want to know right now. It stopped. It stopped. Why? See it. I can see it. Can you see it? Just get, you know, see the trees of the forest. You don't have to be complicated. Just draw the line. <clears throat> Up here, kind of the same thing. Swing high, swing high, swing high. Little trades, you know, well, this is set right here. Why did the market stop right here? Because of this high right here. You know, it saw the high and it failed. And, 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 and as soon as, you know, we actually went a tick or two, a tick above that level. And uh, summertime markets here, folks. So this is another kind of. I don't know, a little caveat, I guess. Summertime markets, market uh, markets, uh, little failures um, can go a long way the other way, okay, really quickly. Um, have you been noticing that? Hand up, yeah. Market market goes up, has a little failure, you know, like this, little failure, little little move to the down, little little break below that line. Maybe it shouldn't have gone five pip, five pips below up here. Little failure. Where do we close that bar? Right here. And market moves down further through here. And then comes back up to our old line right here, comes down, breaks above it. And, you know, this kind of, you, know, you kind of have to blur your eyes a little bit up here, here near this um, high, high here. But um, you can see how, um, uh, or, you know, it kind of leaves an island up here at the at the highs. We end up breaking that and we end up breaking back below these uh, levels right here, which were old, this, the old swing highs right here. Simple type of um, little clues that, 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 you, um, that you get. Um, obviously, news uh, play, played a role here, but um, you had the opportunity to sell against this old high right here. Um, these old race highs right here, where you can define your risk and limit your risk and have the market move in your directional bias um, to the downside. So, all these levels are levels that um, um, I like to look for using very simple tools. Now, um, um, I've added um, a, a new tool right here. This is the Fibonacci retracement. I don't want to go into get, get into too much detail, but I can tell you I like to look at the 50% retracement of a move to the downside. It's a big move to the downside right here. Um, here, come back to the 100 bar moving average near the 50% retracement level. You kind of you kind of thinking about um, you know seeing if the market can hold against these levels right here, and then again right here, market comes right up to that 50% retracement, right up to that 200 hour moving average, because you know those two things are there, the 50% and the 200 hour moving average, and you see the market holding that level. Should that sway your opinion of, of perhaps uh, of moving to the downside here? Yes, yes. If you can do that, if 50% and 200 hour moving average, key level. Not to mention the 100 bar moving average is right behind it. So what is your risk on this trade right here for the dollar yen traders? 
Mm, a move above the 100 hour moving average. That's about, okay, that amount, okay? I'm putting my circle around it. That's the risk. What's the reward? Four, five, six, seven. Doesn't mean you're gonna get all seven times the risk on the trade. But if you, but there, you know, you trade what you see you'll find that um, that uh, th there's going to be that opportunity for you to make two times, three times. You know, th there is an opportunity to make seven times, but, the, you know, when you come down to this other low right here, this other target right here, and buy down there, you can sell right here, buy right here, because you're trading against that low right there. And you'll be, like, picking the market. And that's worth tweeting. Come on, tweet. I just sold the high, I just bought the low. What do you guys do? I think... Well, so, some other smart traders saw the same thing. That's why it happens. That's why it happens. It's traders that don't see it. Don't see the trees through the forest. Have too many things on their charts. Moving average, Fibonacci retracement. That's it. These things stay there. Just draw a high and a low. Boom. Just come down here and put a remember line down at the lows. Here's another one, another one right here. Um, again, um, we had the 200-hour uh, moving average there, um, and we also had the 50% retracement. Tracing level at the level um, that area right there, big cluster cluster area. It was uh, it was sitting on a nice nice edge right here, um, and the market um, uh, chose the the, the the downside as opposed to the upside right here. Um, I think this is a repeat. This looks like a repeat of a chart, doesn't it? It sure does. Let's get through it. No, oh, these are all our levels. Okay, I see what I'm doing here. These are all the trade levels here um, that, that the uh, dollar versus yen potentially uh, gave you. We had uh, this low right here. That was a trade level. We had this high right here against the 200-hour um, moving average. We had this high right here against the 200-hour moving average. Remember that? I don't have the 50% retracement in le level in there. Um, that was there. We had this failure up here. Yeah, you could have gotten stopped out here. You could have uh, uh, lost a, a few pips out here on the trade if the market moved uh, too far away from that 100-bar moving average right there. You sold right here. You can stop yourself out there. Yeah, but um, you know it also failed up there and had the opportunity to move to the downside. We had this correction off of this sharp move to the downside that comes against 100 hour moving average sell it it went fat so fast to the downside right here just try to sell against 100 hour moving average on the correction you have that opportunity to do that um up here we had this um you know this high against this high we had this high against this high right here we had this failure up here that break over there um and down here i forget what we had here probably nothing right there but um over here we had this uh, low and this uh, low right here so all those um all those um all those are uh, easy trades that we, you and I can see, right? We can see that. It doesn't take that, that much to be able to see that. You can see it in real time as well. So let's uh, end by taking a look at some of the uh, euro versus U.S. dollar here. And uh, this is actually price action uh, from today. Again, um, well, here's our simple chart. Uh, what do we know? Well, um, th this is uh, unenjoyment day right here. Market moves down, moves up. Just a total, you know, uh, mess. A uh, little uh, trendy type move, kind of, you know, summer activity through here, D does a lap, moves to the downside, moves to the upside, comes to the upside, comes to the downside. But the trend, uh, more to the upside, corrective move here. Here, um, can't really tell much about risk. Um, uh, we, we see what the, what the market's doing, it's moving to the upside, it's correcting. But I don't know where I can define a risk or limit my risk. So let's find some trade levels where risk can be defined and limited by just using our simple tools. So uh, first thing we do, put our moving averages in. 100, 200 simple moving average. Uh, a few little points here along, along the way. Gets a little uh, dicey up here. It's kind of like the dollar yen trade that we saw as well, where the market moves a little bit above it. Have these little hairs right here. How do you know that the market's not going to go to the upside? You don't. Okay, you don't. You don't. What we do know, um, however, is that um, uh, you could um, you could take a look at um, targets along the way. So we break through the hundred hour moving average here. We move a little bit above it. It fails. Comes back down. Remember, summertime markets does it again. What would be the next target up here if we broke through the hundred hour moving average? And you can come over here to the previous day and look at this swing low right here. Here as a level level, um, you know this really didn't pay much much attention to it. Although 
forever. It's toward the end of the day. But we did have a swing low right here and, and these these lows through here. And it kind of dissects, you know, an upper uh, and a lower lower peninsula, if you will, um, moved above it right here, came down through it right here, tried to stay below it, tried to move lower, couldn't do it, moved above it right here. And you see, you know, sometimes if you look really closely, close, you see a low right here, you see highs right here, you see a low right here, see low right here. You start to piece together one, two, three, uh, four, um, and hold it right there, come back up to that level. So it couldn't get above that level. Um, you know, draw a simple trend line. I'm going to connect some lows. One, two, three, boom. What did we do here today? We went below, below that level right there, didn't we? Um, and I'm uh, kind of looking over where we stand right now. Oh, lo and behold, um, uh, if you have uh, a 200 hour moving average in your chart and you draw this trend line right here, uh, the corrective move that um, that we saw off of uh, this low right here, I'm looking at right now, came right up to that uh, 200 hour moving average or near that 200 hour moving average and rotated back to the downside here. So we are currently trading what at 110, what 23 or something like that. So we're uh, down, down near our we went through our uh, this low right here, but after testing this level, so what's this uh, what's this line doing? It's holding resistance, it's holding resistance against that level, and keeping that lid um, on on the um, on the euro versus U.S. dollar in real real time here. Why? Because traders can see it. You see it, I can see it. So that's what we did. Uh, yesterday, as I mentioned, we had that summertime uh, market here. Market moved higher, moved lower. But even that, you know, even these failures right here move move above. Um, above the uh, line, line right here it tells you something okay the thing about price action that you have to understand stan uh ladies and gentlemen is that um uh is this okay this is, this is kind of important important thing to understand is that the price action it's hard to it's hard to hide the price action from the market it's hard to hide the price action um uh from the market and um uh, it can't, okay? If there are sellers in the market, okay? Remember the big boys. If there are sellers in the market and they sell below this uh, this level right here, this uh, this break level right here, then um, you're going to see it, okay? You're going to see it. And you're going to see that corrective move come up to that 200-hour moving average uh, near it. And if the sellers come in there, um, you have uh, a, a, you know, that's a tell. That, that gives you... You know, you're counting the cards at the blackjack table there. And um, if if you can, um, if if your trade today as a New York trader coming in here today um, is one trade and one trade one trade only because all this happened before, and you come in, you see the you see it break below the trend line, see it break below the 200, it comes up to that level. Your trade of the day in the euro versus U.S. dollars to sell against that broken trend line or against that 200-hour moving average, and if it stays below that level, you're a winner. And you can make more than you you risked on a trade. If it moves above it, you you lose a little. And more times than not, not more times than not, it could be 50-50, it could be 40-60, okay? But the point is that uh, you're able to uh, get make more more on the uh, wins than you are on the losses, okay? And if you can make more on the wins and the losses and, and you're right 40% of the time, you're still going to be ahead of the game at the end of the month. You are, all right? Um, and it doesn't take much. It takes what you can see, what can you see, folks? What can you see? Uh, we got to get through these lows right here. Uh, let me see. This low came in about, oh, let me see where that low is. Where's that low? Did we get through that low right here? Um, but, but, uh, that's one. That's two. This low comes in. I'm looking at another screen. One, uh, it's about the 110.09 level, 110.09. And we've got to a low of 110.17. So we haven't been able to get, we've gotten down into this uh, box right here or into this next target right here. When the market um, uh, when the market moves in a directional bias and then has then has this correction slash reversal of the move, it's, it's hard. We, have, we There's a lot of different levels that you have to get to and through, isn't it? And so um, you have, you target these levels, but as long as you stay below this level, it's, as long as we stay below this break level, then the momentum has the potential to move uh, further in that downside direction or that, that the opportunity exists um what else uh, what else we have here so um at the highs um oh, i already did that the highs uh, highs uh, yesterday yesterday we had this opportunity to sell right through here um at this point right here we have the opportunity to buy right there against that level 
uh, yeah, we already went through this uh, this point right here as a, as a level to uh, to lean against on the correction. Why why is that level important? Well, we have this low here, we have this high here, we have this low here. We're dissecting higher and lower. Do you see that? Do, you know, if you can see this type of thing, you know, where the market goes above, it goes below, it goes above, it tries to stay above. We have this one little, you know, little problem right here, problem child through here. But overall, you can draw this line right here, and it comes right through. Bullish above, bearish below. Bullish above, bearish below. You do have those fake outs every once in a while, every once in a while through here. But you, um, if you can, you know, we have a, we break above here, we have a low right here. We, st we we go up, we come back down, we come back down to it. We try to use that level as resistance. Then we move back above it. Can't go lower. Move back above it. And the market's trying to figure out what it wants to do, and then it figures out, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the downside. I'm going to go to the downside, and so that's what happens right here, and the market ends up going going lower, right? going lower through here see what you know market remembered up here sees a line up here sees a high right here comes up here fails goes back up here next time it comes up there i'm not going to be the sucker who sits there and buys it right here i'm going to be this guy who sells it against that level and the market comes off of that level right let's move back further in time here um this lower here let's you know this we're, we're kind of going backwards in time why did the market stall right here why did the market stall right here is what we're going to look at next and if you take a look at the move to the upside here draw a trend line draw a trend line comes through there we break we come down to the trend line you see how the market comes right down to the trend line here and we bounce right off of that level in real time you know in real time that's what we're seeing okay ignore this price action right here mark so so at this point right here you may be a buyer right here looking for the market to move higher right and the, and it doesn't it's, it comes back down you get you stop yourself out when the market goes lower but what's the next target right here 38.2 percent retracement when the market can't get below that 38.2 and we come back above what do we we do we reestablish that line as a support right here and the market moves up again up to our high price through here and comes back down these are all these are all little trades little nuances in the market yes you're going to have losing trades there are going to be times when you come in here and you're going to buy this level right here and the market's going to the market's going to go go up and you're thinking oh well i just picked the bottom right here and now we're going to go higher right here it doesn't it, it takes it takes that extra you know, maybe stops you out right here, but you still have to get on the horse and you still keep that line in right here. And oftentimes it'll sit there and make that uh, reestablish that line as uh, support and move higher through that level. What about this high right here? Why did the market stall right here at the 112, 12, 8 level? And uh, this kind of gets into another uh, another dimension, if you will. And I'll kind of end it on this um, this um, uh, this this. Uh, chart this idea and uh it comes from uh, the daily chart if you take a look at the daily chart and go back to the july high what the what was the july high 112.15 what was the august high 112 12 12 8 market came right up to that uh high right there the market rotated off of that level so folks um the um the uh what you see on the charts we spend most of our time taking a look at hourly charts in the euro and the dollar versus yen but uh, uh, you know the the next dimension in your trade and the dimension that um, that we didn't get to go through here today, but did, did a lot of things uh, uh, in understanding about what you see and how you have to believe in what you see um, is um, is that you go to the next uh, you go to the next charts and you try to understand what those daily charts are saying to you as well. Even if you're a day trader, is it important to look at a daily chart? Well, if I knew that 112.15 level was there. Right there, my daily chart saying we're going higher. We, or you know, my intraday chart saying we're going higher. We're going higher right here. But we run right into that high price from uh, from the July high, and the market stalls at that level. That's an important level to know, even if you're a short-term trader, even if you're a trader that's not going to take a position overnight. So you you need to know it, but you can see it. You can see it. All you have to do is put your chart up, chart up, take a look at the high, take a look at the swing high, see that level, how the market come down, come down, and you'll be okay. So we have to see and believe what we see. If we as traders can simplify, you don't need a lot of things on your charts. You don't need proprietary boxes or tools, you know, certain, you know, things that are programmed, programmed that only you can see. Um, you, you can you can uh, you can control your fear by uh, defining your risk and limiting your risk, so you, you don't have to be a scared trader. If you do all those things, and, and uh, uh, there's a lot of trades out there for you. 
There's a lot of trades. There's a trade, trade at least a trade or two a day, a day where the risk is defined and risk is limited against level levels that um, that really makes sense. And so if you're patient, if you can if you can find those if, uh, find those levels by just using these simple tools, drawing lines. Can you draw a line? Yes. Can you put a, foot, a, a moving average on your charts? Yes. Can you learn how to use Fibonacci retracements? It takes some uh, takes some effort to do do that, and um, uh, but uh, you can you can. And along those along those lines, uh, you know, learning about uh, this, uh, I just was able to spend forty minutes with you um, talking to you about um, about this market uh, about um, this this topic. But um, I also give uh, uh, or. or um, are, are out for hire, if you will, uh, with a attacking uh, currency trends course. And we have our next uh, course coming up. It's a limited enrollment, 25 uh, traders only. Uh, the class is um, uh, starting to fill up right now. Um, but um, our next course is going to take place on September 18th and 19th. The start times are going to be at uh, 9 a.m. Um, uh, on Friday and Saturday. That's going to be our, our traders course. We just spent 45 minutes here today. I'm going to spend eight hours with you, okay? Eight hours with you on Friday and Saturday going through um, the attacking currency trends, my book, my book, and, um, uh, and, and, and being able to expand on a lot of different things along the way, way about how you can build your foundation for your tra trading um, starting at the very, very, very beginning and moving ourselves up in a progressive way. Folks, everything uh, comes off of a base in trading. Oftentimes, retail traders skip that step skip that step we're gonna we're not gonna skip that step uh it's gonna be online we're gonna go for four hours again on friday and saturday um and then uh during the next week uh, week uh, from monday through friday from uh, september 21st to 25th um you're gonna sit in a live trading room with myself um also gonna be joined by other people from uh, forex live adam's gonna adam's gonna uh, uh, produce or have a, a lesson uh mike uh, patterson uh Eamon sheridan ryan littlestone all of them are going to join us uh for the uh during the week uh you're going to learn about um how they approach the market how they trade the market um, but um, and uh, then we're also going to be in the live trading room applying what we learned in the attacking currency trends course uh, that we uh, did on Friday and uh, Saturday for those eight or so hours. And we're going to add add to it. You're going to be able to ask your questions and go forward forward. And uh, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. So um, if you want to uh, find information about that uh, course, just go to that um, website right there, education.4xlive.com forward slash act. And you can learn all about it there. Uh, can I drop that link in the chat room? Yeah, sure. HTTP slash education dot forex live dot com forward slash act. There you go. Uh, the feedback uh, from we've had this uh, course two two other times. And the feedback has been uh, overwhelmingly uh, more uh, positive in regard to it. Just got an email yesterday uh, from one of our uh, students, showed us this, his profit graph of uh, what he did before and what he's doing after. And it's a steady move to the upside. His comments uh, are uh, to the effect that uh, note how the drawdowns are very little and how the, um, you know, the, the market uh, or, or the profits kind of continue to move to the upside. So, um, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of different testimonies and stuff that are, are on the screen, you know. Again, you know, it comes down to seeing and believing and, uh, you know, I believe in what I do and how I do it. And uh, so I hope that uh, you do find um, uh, that you think about uh, taking this course. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always email me as well at Greg at 4xlive.com. Um, any uh, any questions out there? If not, uh, then uh, I'm going to sign off. As always, I want to uh, thank the people at for, uh, FX Street for allowing me the opportunity to be here with you here today and share um, you know this brief moment of time uh, to uh, hopefully have you become a better trader or, in this case, to see the market a little better. My name is Greg Michalowski. As always, uh, and, and good fortune with your trading. <laughs>